What I want to do in this tutorial is show you some of the key principles that have allowed me to write the first draft of what is effectively an entire book in less than 30 days using MEMS AI tool, Smart Write and Edit. So one of the things that's really interesting about this is that it's not something that you actually plan out and it tends to emerge somewhat organically. And this is one of the key concepts from Sanka Aaron's book, How to Take Smart Notes. So you end up with this sort of hodgepodge of notes and you don't know where they're going to lead. And so what ends up happening is the ideas that you have emerge organically. And often many of the ideas that I end up having come from existing ideas because all knowledge is built on previous knowledge. So before we get into the tactics that I used to dramatically speed up the writing process, there's some key concepts that we need to go over. The first is how you capture information. One of the things that is really important inside of MEM is to just capture ideas as they occur. And the way this all started was my brother-in-law made some comment about artificial intelligence and creativity. And I wrote down a mem just because I wanted to show him what Smart Write and Edit could do. And I said, hey, check this out. Here's a course outline for a course on artificial intelligence and creativity that was created in about 30 seconds. I deleted the course outline, but I left the mem there. So the thing that's important here is the value of empty mems. So if you're used to taking notes in any other sort of format, the idea that there would be a document with nothing but a title seems counterintuitive. Intuitive, but in MEM, empty MEMs are actually very valuable because they allow you to capture ideas while you are doing something else. So you can use bi-directional links. And the other thing is that all the bi-directional links help you retrace the line of thought that sparked that idea. So one of the things that you would find if you went into my MEM database is that I actually have a lot of empty MEMs. And funny enough, those empty MEMs are linked to other content just because of the titles of those notes. And uh, so I was able to embed them into sentences. So that's one really important aspect of this is to just simply be liberal about capturing ideas as they occur and not worrying about when they're going Going to bear fruit because ideas take time to bake, ideas don't show up fully formed. And so this idea for a book was really just a, a random thought. Now, one thing that's also very important is that you take information and you convert it into knowledge. So how do we do that? That's where things like taking smart notes and things like progressive summarization came in. But there's some other part of this that is actually really critical to understand why I was able to write this book so fast. And it's what I call the three stages of the knowledge generation cycle in MEM and something I talk about in Maximize Your Output. The critical mass of knowledge is effectively when you start to see the network effects kick in and you start to be able to make a lot of connections between your ideas and MEM. And I define that at roughly 50 MEMs or 50 smart notes with content that you can use in other things that you are doing. A sufficient mass usually comes about when you get to about 500 100 mems, and then when you have an abundance, like 5,000 plus mems or even 10,000 like I do at this point, that's when you have this really powerful ability to create at the speed of thought just because you have so much content already ready at your fingertips. But we need to revisit some of the best practices from the series that we did on best practices, giving every single note that you capture a title, titling the notes the way you would title your thoughts, and, and then using progressive summarization and smart notes. Because what ends up happening is when you rewrite notes in your own words, that ensures that Smart Write and Edit, even though it's an AI tool, ends up producing content that sounds like something that you actually wrote instead of something that a machine wrote. And that's really key. But these sort of three stages together and capturing really are what allow you to create at the speed of thought. And so let's get into kind of how this all played out. As I mentioned, I just jotted down this thought about a book called The Artificially Intelligent Creative one day when I was having this conversation with my brother-in-law back in uh, December sometime. And then one day, the note resurfaced randomly when I was working on something else. And just out of curiosity, I thought, let me see what happens if I ask it to generate a synopsis for a book. And the next day, I, I went in and I said, OK, let's just generate a table of contents for this book and see what happens. And by the time I saw the table of contents, I realized that I had more than enough notes that I could actually start writing this book. And so I started out by creating this basic project plan. And the other thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, throughout this process of writing this book, the book has evolved, the process of creating it has evolved, the content has evolved. But using Smart Write and Edit, I actually planned this out. And I talked about how to plan a project uh, using Smart Edit in a previous video. And if you want, you'll soon be able to also see the memoir that I did about best practices for Smart Edit. But I just went in here and I started filling this out using Smart Write and Edit. And it came up with a list of all my various notes on AI. It came up with all the book notes I have and all the articles that I've captured. And that's when I realized I had 
more than enough content to actually start to write this. So I think the big takeaway from that is this idea that you should just follow your curiosity regardless of where it leads because I had really no idea what was going to happen if I asked Smart Write and Edit to create a synopsis for this book. I just thought it was an interesting experiment. But when I saw the synopsis and I saw the table of contents, which I'll show you here in uh, just a second, I realized that this was going to actually be something that I could do and I could do very fast. Basically, what ended up happening was that I used Smart Writing Edit to generate this table of contents, and I'm going to go ahead and show it, to, show it to you here. Now, keep in mind, this table of contents has been rearranged throughout this process multiple times. I used ChatGPT to come up with an acronym to come up for this table of contents so that the acronym basically forms IDEA. So you can see here it's Introduction, Discovering, Enhancing, and then Amplifying, because I thought this is a book about creatives, and I want this to actually be organized in a way that talks about how how we can use artificial intelligence to make our ideas happen. So in a nutshell, that's good. But as I was filling this out, I just started listing notes. So I would go into each section and I would start adding bi-directional links to different notes. So let's go into the, the tactics that I actually used to start writing the book and some of these tactics that you can use to speed up your writing process, whether you're writing a book, whether you're writing a blog post, it doesn't really matter. And one thing that I've talked about before is this idea of embedding links to other notes inside of your sentences and combining different notes together. And that takes us back to why titles are so important. One of the sections of the book is called how to build an artificially intelligent second brain. And so I actually have a note here about consumption habits for an artificially intelligent second brain. And what you'll notice here, if you look at this note, is that there are links to all sorts of other notes inside of the database. And so basically what we're doing is we're taking existing content and we're combining it to create something new. And that is actually why your titles are so vitally important because of the fact that when you have good titles, you're able to make connections between notes and embed them into sentences much more easily. Titles ultimately make your notes connectable. And that's why I say that in the hierarchy of importance, when it comes to organizing information or mem, titles kind of trump everything else. So that was the first tactic that I used to speed up the process for writing this book. But where this came to be very powerful was when I started doing things like converting a set of bi-directional links into a paragraph. So I'm gonna show you an example of what that looks like. So for example, in this case, we have this note titled, The Personal Network Acknowledges the New Second Brain. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could take these bullets, all of which are bi-directional links, and I could say, convert into three paragraphs. And what that allowed me to do was actually have a foundation to work with when I started working on each section of the book. And since all of those notes are written in my own words, I know that it will basically sound like something that I wrote. And you can see here, it took that and then we've just converted you know, what were effectively a bunch of bi-directional links into a paragraph and then we can start to expand it. And one thing that I noticed while I was going through this process is even when I would start to expand it and have Smart Write and Edit write for me and it was using my notes, it would sound exactly like something I wrote because I had so many notes in here on the subject of AI and second brain and systems. So I was able to convert a lot of these bi-directional links into paragraphs and that ended up saving me a ton of time. And it also just gave me a place to start when I had an idea of what I wanted to include in the chapter, but I wasn't necessarily sure how I wanted to structure it or how I wanted to write about it. And just converting a group of bi-directional links into a paragraph or two paragraphs ended up being one of those tactics that was really useful. So this was another tactic that I used, and this is something I often use when I write blog posts as well. Often I will have a bunch of headers, but I may not know exactly what I want to cover. So one of the things I'll do is I'll just highlight a header here. And let's say, for example, we didn't have this text here. And I just basically said bulleted list of topics to cover. And so what ends up happening then is I ended up having a bullet point list of the things that I need to write about. So in this case, it didn't do a very good job, but in many cases it will. So for example, let's say we got rid of all of this content here, then we would see that. For example, I could say something like designing websites with AI, and I could say bulleted list, or just go down here and say list of topics 
to cover. And then what you'll see here is it will actually give us a bullet point list of all the topics we might want to cover in this blog post. Now, keep in mind, your mileage will vary with AI. So you can see here, it actually gave us a bunch of things that we can use. And so now, rather than having to completely start from scratch, I actually have some sense of where I want to start. Because of the fact that I use the AI to generate the bulleted list, I can actually write these in my own words, and it doesn't sound like something AI wrote. So that's another example of how I sped up the process pretty dramatically. But probably one of my favorite examples of doing something interesting with SmartWrite and Edit, probably one of my favorite examples of something that you can do with SmartWrite and Edit is to experiment with different styles. So originally I had written this introduction and I talked about all of the things that I was able to do. So you can see here that I had this sort of conclusion to this introduction and what I asked SmartWrite and Edit to do was to write a science fiction version of it as a story. And that became the, the start of the book, which is uh, a day in the life of an artificially intelligent creative. And so that was one very cool experiment with style. So just to recap all of this, one thing that's vitally important is to just be liberal about capturing ideas as they occur. Don't worry if your MEMS are empty, because again, that's what bi-directional links are for. There's actually a lot of value in empty MEMS, whether you realize it or not. And even if you're not sure what to do about an idea, it usually will resurface at some point just the way it did here. It's very much a bottom-up approach instead of a top-down approach where you start with something that you want to do, and then you start gathering ideas, whereas this allows your ideas to emerge organically. The other thing that's very important important is to convert, convert information into knowledge, and that means progressive summarization, rewriting notes in your own words, because that's going to make the content-aware AI in Smart Write and Edit be a thousand times more effective in making it sound like something that you actually wrote instead of something that a machine wrote. And then you know, the other part is to follow your curiosity, no matter where it leads. Again, a lot of times when I'm doing something in MEM, I'm just experimenting and seeing what will happen if I try something with Smart Write and Edit and I end up discovering things. So for example, when I generated the table of contents, I really wasn't expecting that it would generate a table of contents that effectively referenced pretty much all the notes that I already had. And when I saw that I could actually do this using all the notes that I already had, I knew that I was gonna be able to write this book really fast. And then finally, the tactics. The first is to just combine different links to into sentences, which takes us back to the whole idea of why titles are so important. The second is to group different sets of notes together as bi-directional links, maybe three, four, five bi-directional links into one mem, and see what happens when you convert those uh, bi-directional links into a paragraph or three paragraphs, whatever it might be. The third tactic is to, instead of have Smart Write and Edit do the writing for you, have it generate headers and then have it generate a bulleted list of topics to cover under each of those headers because then you actually force yourself to write. And I think that this is vitally important because I think that there are a lot of people who are just replacing themselves with ChatGPT, but if you're serious about really amplifying your creativity, you want to leverage AI tools like Smart Write and Edit to amplify and extend your creative potential, but not to replace you because you have unique human skills that really matter. And I think that's really important. So I tend to use AI more as a writing coach than I do a replacement for me. I ask it to do things like you've seen here that speed up the, the writing process, but the foundation, of course, is all based on the things that I have put into MEM because all AI begins with human input. You're 50% of the equation here. That's why your notes matter so much. The content of your notes, the way you title them, the way you structure them, it makes a world of difference in being able to do this. And then finally, experimenting with different styles. Like Style is one of those things that's just a matter of personal preference. I thought it would just be an interesting experiment to create a sci-fi version of my real-life day-to-day experience with MEM, and I was pleasantly surprised by what it came up with. So that, in a nutshell, is how I've used MEM to write a book in about 30 days. For those of you who are curious about the Artificially Intelligent Creative, I'll include a link where you can download the first chapter for free. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.